Another night of bitterly cold temperatures ahead for the Bluegrass State. We'll show you who has the best chance of seeing record lows coming up. Garbage trucks returned to the streets today in Lexington. And they had some help getting around. A 13-year-old driver dies in a car crash. Police say the accident happened when he took his mother's car out for a joyride. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon to you. The frigid air just won't loosen its grip on us. It could be another record-breaking night for temperatures across our area. WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking this Arctic air force this afternoon, and we have been here before, have we not? Yeah, we have for the past, oh, what, week and change now. It's been nothing but the frozen tundra out there. And, you know, it was a week ago today that we put better than a foot of snow on the ground for many of us. That snow is still out there in a lot of cases, not all of it, but uh, at least half of it in a few spots. And now with clearing skies tonight, temperatures will drop quickly. Record low in jeopardy for Lexington. Your Tuesday morning record low temperature. One below zero from 1967. As of now, we're going to try to get into that ballpark and make him in just under that. It's all about clear versus cloud cover. Clouds at night act as a bit of a blanket, keeping thermometers up a little bit. So if we have a little cloud cover, we'll stay on the plus side of zero. Clear skies, negative numbers will show up where you live. Current temperatures into the mid to the upper teens, where we have some uh, clearing into northern Kentucky 17. 25 down in Jackson with a little more in the way of some overcast conditions. Feels like it is six, by the way, once we factor in the winds here into the Lexington area. So gusty winds creating wind chills that'll go below zero uh, area wide. Again tonight. Doesn't matter if you are plus five or minus five. Live first alert defender. Nothing that is out there, though I'm tracking a little snow across parts of the Ozarks where freezing rain causing a big issue as well. That system is staying far enough to our south to not impact the majority of Kentucky, though I suspect the far southeastern corner of Kentucky tonight will pick up on a little light snow from that as we go into tomorrow. Record cold again possible tonight. Those snow chances on the increase. And another blast of bitter before the week is over, guys. Seven day forecast has all kinds of winter written all over it in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. And not much of a break for the road crews. They remain busy since this winter storm hit last Monday. Today, workers in Lexington tried to get to streets that still had not been touched. They also provided a little help for those collecting garbage. WKYT's Victor Puente has more in our top story at five. As waste management trucks rolled out this morning, their drivers kept in close contact with the people at the Division of Streets and Roads. The side of these big trucks was a welcome one for people who had containers holding two weeks' worth of garbage. Most of the roads are clear. They're still having to deal with wheels in the snow. We have to pull them out or get them unstuck because they're frozen in the snow and stuff. And when the roads aren't clear, they're asking for help. They're coming out and helping us and trying to salt the road so that we'll be able to get everything because we're trying to get everything we can today. Plow drivers with the Division of Streets and Roads spent the day focusing on neighborhood roads and making detours as necessary. If they encounter a street that is difficult for them to service, uh, we're immediately dispatching a truck or two trucks to get out and uh, help them. Even with that help, Spillman says she expects the next few days to be long ones. She says most days her route takes five to six hours, but today she expects it will take nine or ten. Matter of fact, it's kind of like double duty today. Streets and roads workers are trying to work a day ahead. They spent today cleaning tomorrow's garbage routes, then they're targeting sidewalks. Spillman says she's thankful for the help and thankful when the public makes her job easier. I appreciate the people that have taken time to clean us a spot and try to put it out for us to be able to reach it. That has helped us a whole lot. As part of that planning ahead, Rob Allen told me they already have more salt coming in today, just in case any more is needed this winter. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. And Allen has said that once they have snow and ice removal taken care of, their next priority for the roads is taking care of any potholes that have formed during the storm. Snowy roads kept students in many communities out of school again today. In addition to covered back roads, school officials in Lincoln County are dealing with weather damage at a couple of schools. Our Mark Barber has more on these snow struggles. The Lincoln County superintendent says they decided to cancel school again today because many back roads are still in bad shape. School officials say there's only one lane clear on those roads, so if a school bus were to meet another vehicle, 
one of them would end up in a ditch. The superintendent tells us this is the sixth day that schools have been closed since the massive winter storm dumped about a foot of snow in Lincoln County. We're told the school district only had to cancel five school days before the storm hit. This weekend, the superintendent says the snow broke through a canopy outside Waynesburg Elementary School and then burst frozen pipes in Lincoln Middle School. Uh, all kinds of problems. The superintendent tells us they have decided to cancel classes tomorrow because quite a few roads are covered in patches of ice. With these dipping temperatures that we're having now has caused some problems. Uh, with the water freezing back, black ice, kind of where we're standing here now. While slippery roads are a concern, school officials say they are also worried about the bus drivers who can't even get on the road. But those that leave their buses at their homes uh, to uh, ease the fuel expense of driving back and forth uh, now have their buses plowed in and they don't have a crew that will come out and dig them out. The school board will meet on March 12th to decide how they will make up their snow days. In Lincoln County, Mark Barber, WKYT. The superintendent says they will move their staff workday that was scheduled for March 20th to tomorrow to make up for one snow day. The state emergency operations center, the EOCs, remain open following last week's winter storm. Instead of road conditions, the EOC is now keeping an eye out on water problems caused by this extreme cold weather. Many communities, especially in eastern Kentucky, have lost service because water systems just could not handle the Arctic temperatures. Some are out of service uh, completely. Some are in states of repair, some are still looking for leaks, uh, so we are um, in the process of, of moving uh, water supplies uh, to these areas. And this is a, uh, a large, large undertaking for all of our, our, our partners. Now how serious is it? Well, the National Guard has been called into places like Pike and Harlan counties to deliver water. Crews continue to restore power to thousands in Tennessee where ice and snow hit this weekend. The Red Cross has set up seven shelters statewide for people who need a warm place to stay. Several people staying at one in Monterey, Tennessee had to be rescued from their homes. I don't think you can really imagine it's this bad until you get here. They don't have heat. They had no way to even get down here. Officials say it could take weeks to restore power to everyone in that area. Back here in Kentucky, we already have dozens of school closings for tomorrow. Remember, you can see if your district is one of them by visiting WKYT.com. A 13-year-old is dead after police say he crashed his mother's car while taking it on a joyride. That happened about 2.30 this morning on Kentucky 3439, just south of Barberville in Knox County. State police say a trooper spotted that car but could not get it stopped in time. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has more on the crash. Well, I'm told that the 13-year-old victim actually lives very close to where this happened. Apparently, very, very early this morning, about 2.30, the boy took his mother's vehicle without her knowing about it. A 14-year-old girl was with him when they went along this roadway and then crashed. A Barberville City police officer noticed the car headed down Kentucky 3439 without its headlights on. But before he could stop the car, it ran off the road and hit an embankment. Both the 13-year-old boy identified as Jathan Patterson and his female 14-year-old passenger were thrown from the car. Police say neither were wearing their seat belts. Patterson was pronounced dead on the scene and the girl was taken to the Knox County Hospital. Police had the difficult task then of telling a mother that her son not only had taken her car without her knowing it, but that he had also been killed in the crash. When the victim is a small child, uh, and you have to do a death notification and go to a, a person's residence and notify them that their loved one is, uh, is deceased. It's uh, very tough as a police officer. Now, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I asked a lot of questions to Kentucky State Police, and they said that a lot of that is still under investigation. The road conditions, the speed, things of this nature, but police did tell me they do believe speed was a factor. Much more on this at 6 o'clock, but for now in Knox County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And we we're told Jathan Patterson's family will be making arrangements at Hopper Funeral Home tomorrow. The Cats will be on the road this week trying to extend an historic winning streak. Today, one of the coaches talked about the reason for the team's success. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here now with more in our Big Blue coverage. Hi, Rob.
Hello, and with a win this week, it will be the longest winning streak Kentucky has ever had. 28 straight, the Cats play at Mississippi State Wednesday night. All the way, it has been a team effort. Now, assistant Barry Rorson is in his first year here on the UK staff. Today, he said what he's seen from this group has been amazing. It's amazing that you can get a group of guys on one team that care about each other so much, that, you know, like each other so much. Uh, you know, that are self, selfless. Uh, we probably have, we have over 400 assists on, you know, 700, you know, made field goals, you know, somewhere in that number. Uh, and probably goes far to say it's probably the highest assist average uh, per game during the Cal Parry era here. And that, that says a lot about these guys. So it is back on the road Wednesday down to Starkville. Game time will be 7 o'clock against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. It'll be televised on the SEC Network. You know, last week, Carl Anthony Towns was talking about that imaginary Carlito on his shoulder. Today, Assistant Barry Rorson said he was the one who came up with the name Carlito. All right, Rob, thank you. And the Cats, believe it or not, have only four games left in the regular season. They'll be back home Saturday to play Arkansas. The FBI is working with mall owners nationwide to boost security after a terror threat. Somali-based group Al-Shabaab released a video Saturday calling on Muslims to attack shopping centers, specifically naming the Mall of America. U.S. authorities say there is no credible evidence that a U.S. mall attack is imminent. Still, shoppers are on alert. Yeah, I'm scared because I have kids. You know, I have two little ones. We checked with Fayette Mall. They say they have taken extra security measures since 9-11, but don't want to talk about them specifically in order to avoid compromising their efforts. They encourage shoppers to be on alert for anything suspicious. President Obama wants to crack down on brokers more interested in collecting fees than helping people save for retirement. While the president says outdated rules are costing Americans millions, financial planners argue the proposal will hurt people even more. Craig Boswell has more now from Washington. President Obama says middle class families do not know who they can trust to manage retirement savings and often get biased advice. All told, bad advice that results from conflicts of interest costs middle class and working families about $17 billion a year. The president went to the AARP here in Washington to propose brokers put what's in the financial interest of the customer first and make it more difficult for them to sell products with higher fees and commissions. These payments, these inducements, incentivize the broker to make recommendations that generate the best returns for them, but not necessarily the best returns for you. Supporters say the administration is closing a key loophole. This is a billion dollar industry, and they've obviously been making fees and commissions off of uh, the status quo of, of, of giving advice that isn't in the best interest of workers and retirees. Ken Benson with the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association says the president's proposal will drive up the cost of retirement savings for the very people he's trying to help. We'll end up costing some investors more, having them pay for what they have chosen not to pay for, and for others will leave them without the access to advice that they need to make the right decisions. Many financial advisors say there are already adequate regulations in place. The administration's tougher restrictions face several months of public comment before they can be changed. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. Uh, agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission help regulate financial advisors. The University of Kentucky is celebrating its 150th birthday this week. Today's events, including a convocation at the Singletary Center for the Arts, it was followed by a student celebration. Both included speakers and musical performances. The students say it's a special time to be on the UK campus. Being a part of the 150th graduating class means something special because we get to look back on the legacy that's been laid down and how UK is going to project in the future. The student celebration included free t shirts, a photo booth, and even a cake for UK's 150th birthday. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Researchers have found another method to try and combat peanut allergies in children. Marley Hall shows us how giving them peanuts at an early age might help. The chances Evan Woolen would develop a peanut allergy were high. He had serious eczema, he had an egg allergy. 
When he was 11 months old, his mother enrolled him in a study at King's College London that involved more than 600 babies at high risk for peanut allergies. The infants were assigned to eat peanut protein or avoid it. The findings published in the New England Journal of Medicine found introducing peanut early dramatically decreased the risk of developing a peanut allergy. Feeding young infants with eczema, peanut, in the first year of life was associated with a striking reduction in the prevalence of peanut allergy and seemed to prevent more than 80 percent of cases. Dr. Hugh Sampson at Mount Sinai Hospital says this is a landmark study that should change food allergy guidelines. I think that we will now see a prevalence of peanut allergy in this young population start to drop instead of continually increasing the way we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years. Now eight years old, Evan never became allergic to peanuts and can eat whatever he wants. My favorite food is peanut butter, which does have a lot of nuts in it. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York. Target is making it less expensive to get free shipping when you shop online. Now you only have to spend $25 on Target's website to get free shipping. Previously, it was $50. Target also offers free shipping on most orders placed with its red card. Gas prices have started to rise again. They've increased for 27 straight days. AAA says it's normal to see price increases this time of year due to refinery maintenance. Nationally, gas prices average about 2.30 a gallon. Here in Kentucky, you'll pay about 2.25. Remember, you can always find the cheapest gas prices on wkyt.com.